All right, welcome back. We're going to take a look at uploading files to our Golang web server. So we have our form here, and we have two different inputs. We have our first input here, which is a type file, and it's going to allow us to choose a file. And our second input is our submit. So we've changed the name attribute to upload, as you can see here. And if I go to my directory, you can see inside my images folder, we currently do not contain anything as of yet. But if we run our application, choose a file, let's go with dog, and we upload that, your file was successfully uploaded. So if we go back to our directory, and I look inside our images folder, you can see we now have a JPEG, JPEG file. If we click on that, yep, there we go, it's our cute little pupper. So, Let's take a look at how this works. Um, we've only got two paths registered. One of them's just here. I'll let someone know they're at the home page. One we're concerned with is at the slash upload path. And that's going to run our multiplexer, make it run the upload file function. If we go take a look at our function up here, our upload file function, as you'd expect. We have our response writer, we have our pointer to our request, and Depending if the method of the request is a get or a post, we want to go ahead and do two different things. If it's a get request, say it's just the server going to there, uh, we want it to go ahead and upload. I'm sorry, we want to parse our file upload HTML file. So that's our form. We want to go ahead and serve that. And if we are, say, hitting the submit button, well, that's going to run a, a post method or it's going to make the request method a post, and then this wouldn't be equal to true, and it would just run all the way down to the bottom here and eventually say, hey, your file was successfully uploaded. So as you can see here, we just, our last step, we just uploaded a file, and we were printing off the method, which was of type post, but if I go back to there, just with the browser, because the post request was made by hitting the submit button on our form. So we're just using our browser to go straight there. And that is, of course, a get method. So it'll run this chunk of code here, or sorry, this will equate to true. We'll run this chunk of code, and we're going to run the file that upload file upload.html file which contains our form. And if we take a look at the form, like I said, we have two different inputs. First one here is of type file, and that's allowing us to pick which file we want to go ahead and upload. And the other one here is the name attribute, and we're going to use this to pull the data from this input later. So we're going to use my file in our code to get to the data that we're, we're uploading with this, uh, with this input. And of course the other one is our submit, and like I said we change the, the value to upload, so the button now says upload. Uh, if we look at the opening form tag, you'll see here on action we're going to be running the path slash upload. And we're going to use the method post. So when we're just going to slash upload in our browser, that's a get request, or a, a, a get method for our request. And it, when we hit submit, this one's going to use send a request, but it's going to be a method post. So that's why we're going to run two different pieces of code. So if, you know, if it's a get, we're just going to go ahead and serve our form. If it's a post, we'll continue running through our code, eventually let them know that their file had been uploaded. And if we take a look at that, like I said, our request is just a struct with that field, which is of type string, which we just printed back to the back to the screen. Um, just like any form, we still need to parse our form, but for this one, we're not going to use the other. Uh, parse method, we're going to use the parse multi-part form, and we're going to give it a maximum memory that it is allowed. So 
Uh, this is just going to make sure so we can't upload something insanely big to our website. So we're going to go ahead and parse our form, and then we're going to use the our form file, and this is going to help us get the data from that particular input. And like I said, we're looking for that key is going to be the name of that input. So if we go back to it, as you can see, our type file input. The name attribute is my file, so that's how it's going to know this input and know that we're not talking about some other input we may have. Anyway, that's where we get my file is from the name attribute of the input we're, we're grabbing from. And we're going to be returning three different things here. Uh, two of them are from the multi part package. So we're going to be returning our file and we're going to be returning our file header. And of course, our error as well. So, you know, we'll check and see if our error, you know, we'll make sure, you know, that it is nil. If it's not nil, we're going to go ahead and print that off and end our other function. Um, and we want to make sure we close this. We're going to use the defer, and we want to, uh, we don't want this out there still open. We want to make sure we close our file at the end of this function, so the defer will do that for us. Um, if we go back, now this is a multipart.file. There's our parse form. So, so our, inside our multipart, uh, package type file. Um, it says here is stored on disk. The file's underlying concrete type will be and pointer to OS dot file. So if we go to OS and if we go to file, you will see that's where we're getting that method from the close method because the underlying type is OS dot dot file, and that's. And that's why we're able to run this method on our file, even though it looks like a multi-part file, it's also an os.file uh, data type as well. Uh, anyway, we have our header as well, and we're gonna go ahead and print off some information. We're gonna print off the file name, the size, and the header. We'll look down here, the name of our file was dog.jpg. We went ahead and printed off the size, and our header here is a map, and we have two different keys. At the first level, we have content disposition. We have a content type. The content type is the one we're interested in because if this is a JPEG, we want to go ahead and save it to our images folder. If it's a you know, .js extension, we want to save it to our JS folder. And if it's .pdf, we want to go ahead and save it to our PDFs folder. So we want to be able to grab this part out of there to determine what it is. So image slash JPEG was, was our, our dog JPEG. Anyway, to get that to print off here, we're print, you know, we're we're grabbing that value out of that map and saving it to content type, and we're printing it. As you can see, we got image slash JPEG. Uh, we take our file header, and we're giving it the key content type, and that's going to get us this slice. But we still, since it's a slice, we need to tell what index. So we're just going to say, hey, give us index zero because we want the first one. And that returns us our image slash JPEG. And we can use that content type that we're returning from this map to figure out, hey, which type of file do we have, do we have here? So we're going to check and see if it's image slash JPEG, if it's an application slash PDF, or it's a text slash JavaScript. And depending on each one of them, if it's an image, we'll save it to the images folder. If it's PDF, we'll save it to our PDFs folder. And if it's a JavaScript, we're going to save it to our JavaScript, our JS folder. Let's go ahead and upload a couple more. Upload our JavaScript. That was successfully uploaded. There we go. So there is our JavaScript file. And if we up, as you can see, we still have nothing in our PDF, but upload that. There we go. Now we have a PDF as well. 
Okay, so we're using these if statements to determine which type it was, and we're running a different section. So at that last one, since it was a PDF, you know, it was application slash PDF, as you can see here, as we printed it off, this was true, ran this block, ran this block, and what we're using in each one of these is just an IOUtil temp file function. And this is going to take a directory where we want to go ahead and make this new file. Like I said, one of them was in the images directory, one of them was in our PDF, one of the JavaScript, as you can see, images, JS, and PDFs. Now, in the second part here, this one is going to be our pattern, how we're going to name this. So the .jpg, as you can see, we decided that, but we have a random set of numbers in front of it. And that is wherever you have the last uh, asterisk that you have in here. If I put two of them, it would put the first one and then put the random numbers right after it. But the asterisk is going to get replaced by the random numbers. So that's where that's coming from. That's what IO util temp file does. Okay, so we've created our file and we've created our error. And we'll print off the error to see what it is. And at the very end, we still want to make sure we close our files. So we need to use our defer keyword and OS file dot close. We'll close at the end of our function. Now this creates our file. This doesn't actually save the values from our input. That's what this section down here does. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to go ahead and block this out to show that without this section, it's not going to save that to our file. And we're going to choose our JavaScript file again. Upload it. And as you can see here, it didn't actually save. We created the file. We just didn't save any of our data from that input that we had brought in. The old one still has it. This new one did not. So let's go back and change that back. And if we run it again, there we go. We added one more of these files that has uh, the data written back, uh, written to it from our input. Now, one thing nice about having all these random numbers is that you know you're not gonna, it's the chances of there being a collision are much much less. Um, anyway, so to get we got the data from our input and we saved it into our file variable. So let's go back and look at that one. So we use the r dot form file. And we found we grabbed it from the input with the name my, name attribute my file. We save that into our variable name file. Now we're going to use the iOutil dot read all function, and this is going to go ahead and read this file to the end of the file. And this is going to return a slice of byte and an error. And we're just going to save that to file bytes and error. Um, if the error is not equal to nil, we want to go ahead and print that error. And once we have it saved to file bytes, we want to go ahead and write that to this os.file. So that when we created this os.file, that's what's that's where we're creating. Sorry. That's where we're creating this file over over here, and we got to save when we use this io. And file, we created a file here, but we still need to save that slice of byte or write that slice of bytes to it, or else it's just going to be empty. The so os.file, and we'll write that slice of bytes to it. So then, yeah, then we finally have our data in there. And of course, at the very end, we're going to go ahead and take our string and 
hand it to our writer. So that way we can display it on the screen. So anyway, in, in summary, we're grabbing that data from that particular input using the R, the uh, method form file. We're saving that to file, and then we're creating our own. We're creating our own uh, our, a new file using the IO util temp file, and we're you know, deciding you know, where it's going to go, and we're deciding you know, what it's going to be called, and we're letting it to make. Uh, ran, you know, plug in some random numbers should we want it to. And then finally, we're taking that file, we're reading that file that we had got, and we're going to save that to a slice of bytes, and then we're finally going to go ahead and write that slice of bytes to that file that we had just created in our directory. But anyway, if you have any questions, uh, please post them in the comments. Um, I hope that was helpful, and I'll see you in the next one.